Hey, welcome to the next activity here in our C-Sharp web development course. We're on activity five, which is all about REST services. So REST API is the key. So REST API is a technology that is used to create interfaces between a backend and a front end. So in this diagram here, you can see that we have a single database server in the center serving mobile apps and uh, tablets and desktops and maybe watches or any other server even that wants to see the data. The data comes in the format that you see here as well. This is called JSON formatted data. JSON stands for J uh, JavaScript Object Notation. So it's curly brackets with a bunch of tags that are like object properties. And so that's the communication that glues applications together. So the word rest has nothing to do with resting or any kind of pausing. It's a representational state management uh, to a language. API means application program interface. So it means that two communication links are being are connected. And so some terminology here that really means talking between a server and a client. So how are we going to build this? Well, C Sharp, just like any other backend, is good at using REST API technology. We're going to take our existing program that shows products and modify it. So the fake products that you see here are the food products. And we have the entire application built in C Sharp from the beginning to the end in C Sharp. Uh, there is no JavaScript, really. There's no other framework. But what we're going to do is provide a REST link so that when other people want to see our database, they can. So look at this version of the application. You can see that it's the same product, such as, what does it say, lamb, 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 I guess. I was searching for lamb. And these products have the same name, the price, and the description. However, the format is just pure text. So now, if you have a text backend being sent to a mobile app, the mobile programmer will know how to parse this. You can send this to a web, web page, and maybe somebody using a, a framework like React will be able to parse the data and then display it using that framework's technologies. Or you might just keep it right here in the uh, C Sharp ASP.NET world, and you can use Razor as your technology to create a front end web page. Now, when you work with REST services, you're going to need a new kind of client. So most of the time, you think of your web browser, Chrome, for example, as your client. However, when you're talking to REST APIs, you're going to need a REST client. And so the browser for a client is called Postman. Postman's a program that's super popular, and the more you use it, the better off you are as far as knowing how to manage a REST service. So make sure that you know Postman. It'll come up in job interviews. It'll come up in everyone that is working with backends. Now, the reason why you create these backends is because you want to have the option of a front end that might be different. So a good combination would look something like this. .NET Core, which is C Sharp, would be your back end. So that handles the database and the controller. However, the views, the front end, is written in something else, such as React, as pictured here. And so it gives the flexibility of allowing the front end developers to work in the language that they prefer and the back end in the language that they prefer. Also related to this is something called a DTO or a data transfer object. So think of the user objects that might be in your program in the, at the moment. Let's say there's a social security name or the uh, birth date that are in there. You really don't want to share that with information on a REST service. You might want to hide that. And so a DTO is really kind of like a filter that creates a object that is meant to be displayed. It doesn't contain all of the properties. It might contain more properties. It might contain the same. But a DTO is some kind of an adapter between the front end and the back end. And so we'll be coding a DTO. Also unrelated to REST, is another version of our button click game. So uh, in this, we're going to add the ability to handle a right click. So in JavaScript, you can handle a right click, a left click, and even a center click if you have that on your mouse. And so we're going to simply show you how to do a right click, which will change the status of one of these buttons. In Minesweeper, you use the right click when you want to plant a flag on one of the buttons. And so this will be a good example of how you can do that. And so we'll extend the button grid program 
in this activity. Now also, think of the final game design. This is going to be your milestone number three. So this is pretty much the finished product of how the game works. So we're going to apply then the partial page updates now. So instead of a whole page refresh when you click a button, we'll do a single button refresh. So we'll be using Ajax. We're going to keep the uh, back end, of course, in C Sharp, written just like it was before. And then uh, also we're going to use the right click here, just like I show you in the tutorial. So you're going to be able to plant a flag on one of the buttons in Minesweeper. And then we want to be able to calculate when the game ends, either when a person clicks a bomb or they reveal all the squares. And so you'll have a fully playable game. In a future milestone, we'll keep track of the score, so we'll have to put a timer on it and keep a, an actual score and save the results. But for right now, we just want to make the game playable. And so that's what we're going to do in Milestone 3. Remember, for each of these tutorials or each of these milestones, we're going to be using Agile practices. So you're going to be working with a partner. So you and your partner are going to have to come up with a checklist of all of the things that you're going to be accomplishing for the next two weeks or week. It depends on how long your class is running, but for the sprint time anyway. So you and your partner are going to be in agreement on what needs to be done during this sprint. You're going to split up the work so that way you don't have to do everything. And then on a daily basis, you have a quick phone call or a quick meeting and you just chat about how things are going, what needs to be done, what has been done, and if there's any issues that need to be addressed. And so that'll be our milestone. So this is probably milestone four or five, I forget. I put milestone one on the screen, but it's not number one. And so that will be our activity here. We're going to work with Ajax and partial page updates, both in our activities as well as in our milestone. So let's get started with the next video.